So let's start with some quizzes. Oh yeah. Test your knowledge. No prizes? Or? No, no prizes. Just a satisfaction. Okay. How much uh, asbestos fiber can a material have before it's considered positive for asbestos? 2%. Close. 1%. 1%. Doesn't matter. Material. Exactly. Of the overall material, if it's got 1% of it is, is asbestos fibers, it's considered hot or positive for asbestos. Um, anybody remember what point counting is? Something about sampling. It's about sampling. It'll save you a ton of money. Uh, I just saved a contractor $30,000 two weeks ago with this technique. It sounds sketchy at first. You pay the lab a little extra money and they do a different type of sampling and it drops the results 1%. Happens every single time. It works really well with uh, popcorn ceiling because the majority of time popcorn ceiling comes in at 1-2%. to It's almost never at 4, 5, 6. Always in that 1-2%. to You do the point counting. It's basically a more exacting, time-intensive type of sampling uh, that the lab does. And I don't know why, but it always drops at at least 1%. So all of a sudden, your sample is not considered asbestos-containing material. You don't have to hire an asbestos contractor, any old handyman or person can do it. The cost goes down, you know, 80%. Is it safe for them? What's that? <laughs> it's safe for our contractor or handyman. Yeah, yeah, I mean even, you know, the, the EPA, when they designed these laws, they came up with a line that already is on the conservative end, right? So that's why at 0.9 it's considered safe. It's not like at one you would have terrible exposure, but they had to draw lines somewhere. Um, and the point counting, just it drops at 1%. Now, it would be very expensive to do that on every sample. It would be a waste of money because it's like 140 bucks a sample compared to, I don't know, 30 or 35. So all the times it came back at zero, you just spent 140 to get a really exact zero, right? Yeah. It doesn't help at all. So you always wait. You don't have to go out and take another sample. It just sits there at the lab. We call up your client and say, hey, this sample came in at 2% or 1%, do you want to point count this? You should say yes now. Yeah. Um, and then, yep, okay, we reprocess it. Then the report gets sent, sent out. I'll show you. Here's an example. 2% after point counting, 0.25. Not considered an asbestos containing material. Those are very uh, profound, uh, profound words when it comes to finances. Easy to save eight or $10,000 by that right there alone. And you'll never waste the money. If it's three or four percent, I'm not going to tell you to do it. It's just not worth it. There are a lot of labs say try. It never drops it enough for that to work. Just a quick question. Um, when you're sampling the popcorn ceiling stuff, how much do you need? You need about a quarter size. Uh, well, a little bigger than a quarter size. Like that has to be full depth. So you cannot, uh, a homeowner cannot sample unless they are going to do the abatement themselves. Anytime you're hiring somebody, it's got to be a professional. But you'll way more than make up for the cost, you know, 150 bucks or whatever call-out fee, in the ability to point count it. Um, and it's actually fairly challenging to get it right because you have to catch the tape, you have to find a seam. It's, it's not terribly straightforward. Sheetrock is always three samples per continuous area. So if you've got popcorn ceiling throughout a whole floor of a house, even if it's 1,000 square feet but it's all consistent looking, then it's just three samples throughout that whole floor. Uh, vinyl tile or well, any old tile or mastic is two samples, um, but that's per type layer. So if you've got two or three layers, you know it's going to be two samples per. The same point counting works for well, it works for everything. Vinyl tile can come in at uh, five, six, seven percent, but if it does come in at that one to two, then you can trigger this as well. What percentage is the tape that they often put on furnace ducting? Uh, quite high. That's often like 20. So pipe insulation is the time where it's very rare we get to do this because it's often 15, 20, 25 percent. The abatement is somewhat easier, so that's the, the flip side of it. If you do have asbestos, you can't point count it. Um, the price of abatement has gone down a lot in the last five, ten years. I see a fair bit of projects, maybe uh, the mastic beneath some vinyl in a basement in a bedroom, well under a thousand dollars, which years ago was unheard of, right? You just look at it and it's five thousand bucks. So don't let your clients freak out. Um, as always, asbestos is not doing anything when it's just sitting there. 
It's, it only matters when you grind it and scrape it and you inhale it. So if you put carpet over the vinyl, who cares? If you leave your popcorn ceiling, it doesn't matter. It's only when you treat it. Uh, if, you, if your clients are buying a house with popcorn, you guys tried out the, uh, the water flicking trick. So if you take a little bit of water on your hand, get a cup, flick it on the popcorn, give it five minutes. If it absorbs it and turns a little bit mushy, that means it'll be very easy to scrape off. The cost of that abatement's going to go way down. If it doesn't, it means it's been painted so many times that the water can't absorb, and that's how they soften it. It'll be very expensive and hard to get that off. If the water has absorbed and it's, it's like almost sealed, isn't it like contained or encapsulated? Oh, anything? yeah, this just is for aesthetic reasons. If you say, you know what, I want to get the popcorn off there for looks only. Yeah, you're totally right. If it won't absorb it, then put a new piece of sheetrock on top. In fact, in a lot of cases, I think you get a better look. Ditch the scraping, just put a fresh sheet of 3 8 sheetrock. Because a lot of times when you scrape all this, you didn't realize it was hiding some pretty big uneven unevenness beneath, and then it's hard to cover that without, you Are know. Are sparklies indicative of anything? <laughs> you know, I get that question a lot. I wish I had like a statistical analysis of that. I don't know. I mean, it's, we see it at maybe, 50% of it comes back positive for asbestos. I haven't, I haven't seen the correlation. That's a good point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, good call. So it would be easier to scrape. So there seems like a, a whole new standard based on that picture where you actually take a sample going all the way through the sheet rock to the other side. Yep, yep. Where in the old days, am I incorrect that we just you scrape what was on the surface because you assumed it was in that surface layer? Well, so... Yes, correct in a couple ways. If you are just scraping the ceiling, then you don't need to go all the way through. If you're demoing out this sheetrock wall for like a water damage issue or something, you have to go all the way to the back. And if the lab doesn't see the paper, they're going to call up and say, go do it again, because they need to see that full depth. I mean, it's very rare. It's on the back paper. Um, well, you're, you're on to something. There's something called a, a composite where you mix, where it takes the overall average of the whole depth. So you're absolutely right. That's why it's important to, to the way that you take the sample can really change the final results. You know, totally above board legally, but it lowers that uh, percent. The surfacing material can never be above 2% even if the overall composite is below one. So the, the surfacing is the thing the, yeah. the law cares about, but with that point counting, it'll, it'll still always drop it below. So in answering the, uh, you brought it up that it may seem shady at first, in answering the, that question for our clients, what's a satisfactory answer? Is it that, you know, the material is sprayed on with a hopper and so there's different, like, portions of it. It's not a consistent, even, measurement through or is it something different? How would you explain it? You mean between the cheaper initial type of sampling and the more Correct. expensive? Yeah. Oh, I would just position it as um, it's a more exhaustive thorough technique that would be cost prohibitive to do on every sample. Yeah. So the initial type of sampling, they're basically rounding up, okay. right? Yeah. Because they don't want to be in danger of saying, oh, it was 0.5 when really it was 1.5. Yeah. So it's a, it's a round up emphasized type sampling. Yeah. You're paying extra money when it's right on the edge between that one and two and say, hey, let's retest this with the more exhaustive time intensive technique and see what it does. Sure. And it's more precise.